works for me. So we'll just put it in a big pile, just kind of rough chop it. You see I have my hand on the very top, trying to keep it out of the way. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back into a pile. Again, just kind of rough chop it, just until we start getting smaller pieces. You can use the back end, that way you don't mess up the edge on the front top of part of your knife. And from here, what we want to do is just that water walking motion here, just keep getting it smaller and smaller. Turn your knife. I do that. It's just to keep that heat on the pot, so that way you're not worried about them cooling down and then you're trying to make something like that. I'm just matching them up, making sure they're a little bit easier to manage. So you can erase them start seeing a little bit of the bubbles starting to kind of pop around the edges here. That's when we want to go ahead and throw it in. So we have all of them in here. We're going to cut this nice and hot. It's our milk, butter, garlic. We're going to go ahead and throw that in. So you can turn it. We're just going to slowly turn it since it looks like it's a lot of liquid. You just want to make sure that you're... And I personally like to leave the skin on for like red potatoes. It just makes it a little more rustic. But the more you start to whip it, you start noticing them get creamier and creamier. A lot more air gets in there and then they start getting fluffy. So I'm just starting off slow just so that all that doesn't slosh everywhere. And we have... You can also do this like in a stand mixer if you're not wanting to be there the whole time. Mixing it by hand. So you want to season it to taste. You can always add, you can't take out. So do it little by little. Mix it up again. And we can add chives in there if we wanted to on the inside, or we can just go ahead and sprinkle on the top 